I want to start off with my 10 camera purchasing mistakes. And so, as I said, I have spent years working behind the camera counter, selling cameras to people, and I hear people come in and they ask a question, and I say to myself, oh brother, this is going to be a long one. <laughs> this is going to be a hard one because they're already on the wrong track. All right, so here we go. Number 10 on the list is bad advice. All right, their buddy at work, which is the smartest photographer they happen to know, asked somebody, what camera do you own? And for some reason or another, he ended up with a certain model and you've decided you're gonna get the same camera as your buddy at work, even though they really don't know what they're talking about. Number nine, underestimated what their money would buy. Cameras and photography in general is a fairly expensive hobby for a lot of people. And there are some people that think that for $500 or $1,000, they're gonna get a top of the line camera capable of shooting the Olympics on par with all the best sports photographers in the world. And the fact of the matter is, is that very high-end professional photographers do use very high-end gear because it's appropriate to their skill level and they're trying to get the most out of it. Uh, so you have to be a little bit tempered with what you can get sometimes because a good lens is a thousand bucks. Reality didn't match ambitions. Every once in a while, I would encounter somebody who would say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just a year away from retirement, and when I retire, I'm just gonna travel the globe. I'm gonna go all over the place, so I need a camera that is really good for traveling. And then they come back a year later, and they need, well, I need to return this camera. It's like, well, what happened to big old the travels? Well, I got grandkids now, and they're hanging around the house, and I'm doing a lot more people photography than travel photography. And so, it wasn't really clear the direction that their life was going and what they were gonna be doing pictures. And so you do need to buy a camera that fits your lifestyle and where it is going. Number seven, distracted by special deals. You walk into the camera store, you look online, and you kinda of have something in mind, but all of a sudden over here with a shiny, glimmery sign that's got sparkles on it that says special weekend deal, and they have all sorts of kits and lenses packaged together, and it's got the bag and the strap and the tripod, and you're thinking, wow, this sounds like a great deal, but you're not really looking as, is that the camera I want? So don't be distracted by those deals. Overthought the little items. Well, here in Seattle, we've, uh, we've got big businesses in Microsoft and Boeing, which means we've got a lot of nerds in town. And every once in a while, they would come in and they would overanalyze these cameras. And they would come by and they would pick up a couple of cameras and they're thinking, I'm thinking about camera A and camera B. Now camera A has seven stops of bracketing and camera B does nine stops of bracketing, so that must be a better camera. Do you know what bracketing is and how often do you use it? Well, I don't know, but one's got more than the other, so it must be better. And you start analyzing these things because there's a lot of details and ways to compare the cameras, and they just get lost in the details, totally lost in the details, and they need to stand back and kind of look at the bigger picture of what sort of camera do I, what type of camera do I want to get in, and those little items, for the most part, don't really matter. Number five thought more money would solve the problem. Every once in a while, somebody's got more money than they know what to do with, and they're just getting into photography, and if you just kind of forgot about money for just a moment, you could walk in and you could choose any camera you wanted. Is the most expensive camera gonna be the camera that's appropriate to your skill level? Not necessarily so. When I bought my first motorcycle, I did not go spend as much money as I had in the bank on a motorcycle. I wanted to get something that was simple and a good starter for me to learn on. And sometimes with cameras, rather than spending more money, sometimes it's better to spend less money that's appropriate to your skill level and what you are doing. Didn't budget for all the accessories. Many people when they go out looking for a camera, they're thinking, I'm going to spend, and they come up with a number, $1,000 on the camera. Oh yeah, I need a lens. Um, well maybe I'll spend $800 on a camera and $200 on the lens. And what about the tripod and the camera bag and the memory card and the battery and everything else that you might need? And oh yeah, I forgot all about that stuff. And so there's a lot of little things that you're going to need and we'll talk a little bit about those as we go through the class as well. The more money you spend on photography, the smaller and smaller percentage of that is the camera. And so if, you know, when, I, when I go out with my camera bag, my camera probably is about one quarter to one third the cost of everything that I've paid for in that camera bag. 
At the beginning, it might be a 50-50 ratio, and as you get better, the camera value goes down and down in percentage. And so you really got to think about the lens because the lens is as important to image quality as the sensor in the camera. Number three, over-concerned about online reviews. You know, I don't post pretty much anything online, but I love going into the forums and the comment sections and the review sections to see what people say about particular products. And there are haters for everything out there. I can tell you, oh, every camera that you can find, you are going to find an entire group of people that seem to not have a job and spend their entire lives online writing bad reviews and comments about any particular camera. So if you think you're going to find a perfect set of reviews for any camera, it does not happen. And so you have to kind of ignore the chatter Look at the overall scope. Hey, if everyone says the lens doesn't fit on this camera, that's something to pay attention to. Uh, and so you can kind of look at the overall themes of what they're talking about and kind of address that and see how it fits with what's important to you. But for the most part, I have, ha I have seen so many bad reviews and comments about cameras that I use that my camera is certainly not capable of doing this. And I'm like, yes, it is. And so these are just angry people with way too much time and an internet connection. Number two, didn't do the research. A lot of people, when they're getting involved in something that's kind of new, and we all do this from time to time, whether we're gonna go out and we're gonna get into skiing and we've never skied before and we need to learn about skis and ski boots and all of that, or we're gonna uh, go on vacation to a place that we've never been, we're trying to find out this information and a lot of people just go on overload and they just kind of go shut down and they're like, you know, that one, yeah, I'll just take that one. And they don't really bother to get in and do the research. And as I said before, some people do too much research, and so there's an appropriate amount of research to do, and then there's too much. Uh, and so there's a careful balance between those two. So you guys ready for number one? All right, the number one problem, belief that a great camera takes great photos. A lot of people will come into the camera store and they'll be looking at all these cameras, and they'll be asking, Terrible questions like, what's the best camera? Okay, well, there isn't a best camera. There's a best camera for you. Which one's going to take the best pictures? Well, these are artistic tools. It's going to be like buying a guitar or a piano. Which one makes the best music? Well, that has a strong, strong uh, uh, link to how good the artist is behind the lens. And I think it was Ansel Adams who said the most important part of a camera was six inches behind it, all right? And so I could give any one of these cameras to many of the talented photographers that come here to Creative Live, and they could make great photos with it. And so it's not the camera that's ultimately gonna determine the artwork that you're gonna create. It is really you. This is just the tool that you happen to be using at the time. 